Keep doing the good job, man. Keep it up, Tom. How many women do you know who know how to do anything with numbers? None. <laughs> If he hadn't gotten married to you, he wouldn't have to give you half. You, why don't you shut yourself up? I've been listening to you for seven months, and it is the most amazing radio I've listened to in my whole life. You either have a hearing problem or you're so drunk you can't understand what I'm talking about. You're just ridiculous. I'm not drunk, and you don't. You're know just you're some pathetic old drunk calling in here trying to make trouble. I can't believe there's people out there, you know, who are willing to throw everything away, you know, for a flare up in life that that they call love, you know. And unfortunately, I made that mistake, and I've been listening to you now for a while, and it's just like my eyes have been open, and I can't believe I didn't find you any any sooner. And I just want to say thank you for everything that you've been. There's no way that a man can rape a woman. You say rape a woman, you crazy wabbit? Uh, how old is this woman? How old is she? Well, she's now twenty. Okay, she's twenty. That's right. Guys, have you been reading lately about what、uh, hormones and chemicals in the environment have been doing to girls in their first period? Girls are menstruating now at age eight and even younger. Really? Yes. Are they? Okay,、yes. I'm not aware of that. They are. I wasn't aware of that. They are. Okay. All right. But there should be. They menstruate at age eight, then they the start、law. watching Hannah、It's... Montana, and then they start having sex with their teacher by twelve. That's pretty much what's happening. I seem to remember a day when men were more in charge. You know what? Step up, be a man, and quit letting it be sissified. Women don't have to do anything but be women. Stay home, bake my bread, and raise my babies. Women, you know, unfortunately, you gotta screw them before they screw you, and that's just the bottom line. And if women don't like it, hey, there's a door. Like I saw, hey, you don't like it, hey, oh well, there's a door. How easy would it be for everybody to get rid of disease if all it, all you had to do was sit around a group and talk about it? Yeah, let, why don't we have all the people with AIDS? Have a meeting, and they can sit there and they can talk about the twelve steps they're going to take to to get rid of AIDS. Right. That if you ever wanted proof, there it is, right there. I have a disease.、Uh, I've got brain cancer. I'm going to the brain cancer support group so I can get rid of my brain cancer. The pullout method only works in、uh, three different ways. It, it, it didn't work in Vietnam, and it doesn't work any other way either. <laughs> exactly. You know what? Screw the marriage. Marriage is bad, and just go out and just bang the crap out of girls through your the rest of your life. I just don't get that. Why can't they be like you? I think it's cute how you have the little kick him out with like a bong hit or a Kobe style, whatever. I think that's kind of cute. And every time you do the Kobe style, I get a little turned on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh! Hurry up, think about something really quick.、Uh, football, I don't want to. Maybe I need to come over there and take you out, Kobe style, myself. <laughs> I just heard it. I was like, oh, oh my god. <laughs> 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 This could be you, Lisa. <laughs> What time should I be over there, Donnie? <laughs> okay, you got me all ready now. Turn your goddamn radio off. You know, I mean, come on. How long have you been listening to talk radio? Do you really have to turn the radio up? Sorry about that, Tom. Bag. <laughs> What was I in the sixth grade last time? Somebody called me a fag. <laughs> fag. From a place we're not allowed to reveal, it's Flash Friday. I want more money. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Like a Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're gonna need it. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight 
866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Wide open telephones on this Friday on the Tom Lyka Show. For those of you who live in L.A., they've reported the eighth recent armed robbery on Melrose Avenue. And for those of you who don't live in L.A., Melrose Avenue is generally considered to be one of the trendier shopping areas in town. Eight armed robberies, and this is a big story. A lot of people are surprised. Why is anybody surprised there's eight armed robberies on Melrose Avenue? The economy stinks. People are losing their jobs. People are going broke. You think you're not going to see more holdups? You think you're not going to see more armed robberies? Get used to it. I mean, we've had we've had it so good for so long. You you don't know what happens when the economy stinks. When the economy stinks, somebody wants to hit you over the head and take what you have. It's just the way it is. Flash Friday on the top like a show. Headlights are on across North America. Ladies, if you see somebody with the headlights on, show us your knockers. See a nice pair of knockers? Call me, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. Carlos on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Tom, I'm trying to figure something out, man, and i got to pick your brain. Okay. Okay. So this is the scenario. I uh, I drink a certain kind of alcohol. I've been drinking it for years. It's what is? Thing. What do you drink? What do you drink? Uh, it's tequila, Casadores. Casadores. Okay, I have some right here. Okay, very, very, very good, very taste, very nice taste to it. Um, I've been drinking it for years. Everybody knows it's my favorite. Uh, just uh, in a little while, in about a week, I'm about to go visit my mother-in-law, and uh, she just told my wife that she bought me another brand of tequila that she thought I would like better than what I normally drink. What kind is it? I don't know. She didn't. Uh, she didn't say. But the point of this, of this all is, is that. I'm trying to figure this out if this is like a girl thing or if she's just trying to be a, you know, uh, a female dog about it. Um, if I know that you like a certain brand of something, why would I buy you something else? I'm going to tell you why. We don't know what your mother-in-law is going to give you. Okay. Okay. Um, what's the most expensive bottle of tequila you ever drank? Uh, I don't know. Patron. I don't know. Patron? I don't know. I don't know. You are aware there are tequilas now that sell upwards of $200 a bottle. Absolutely. I understand. Some of those are remarkably great. Now, I love Casadores, and I have it at home. Okay. Um, but I also know from doing a, a little weekend radio program about wine and spirits that I do <laughs> that there are tequilas that are getting as crazy as vodkas, triple filtered, quadruple filtered. Right. I mean, amazing stuff that is so smooth you could drink it like a cognac. Right. Now, if your mother-in-law got you something really special like that, maybe it's not what you normally drink. Okay. But wouldn't you be curious to try it? Um, I, w I am open to try anything, Tom. But what I'm trying to figure out is, see, I, I did a little research of my own. I asked uh, both men, colleagues, and women... The same question. Ninety percent of the men that I asked said that they would buy the brand of alcohol that I would like because but they did, know that. But you like. didn't get. Did you when you asked the question? Did you give them the option? For example, they're probably thinking that your mother-in-law bought you Cuervo, or she went to, to Trader Joe's and got Tequila of the Gods. Mm -hmm. Did they consider the possibility that she might have got you something way better? See, but it, it wouldn't matter if it's way better. It's what I drink. You see what I'm saying? It, no, 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 but, 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 but again, <laughs> a bottle of Casadores, and I was just at Costco. It goes for about 22 bucks. Right, right. Not expensive. Right. A bottle of El Sombroso goes for 160 bucks. And the bottle is shaped like a man's genitalia <laughs> in an aroused state. Okay. Which you'll be after you taste El Sombroso. Mm. Oh, it's good. <laughs> the thing is, it depends on what she got you in its instead. Okay. All right? 
I mean, anytime somebody can get you a twenty-two bottle, a twenty-two dollar bottle of tequila. Now, if she went out and got you tequila of the gods, which in my opinion is guaranteed to give you a hangover, right? Then I would say, who does she think she is? That's what she's trying to tell me here. But I, I'll give you an example. My my favorite bourbon of all is Booker's. Huh. I, I don't know if you drink bourbon. No, no, I but don't. Bo- Booker's is a small batch bourbon made by the people who make Jim Beam. Okay, it is yeah. it is barrel strength, and it is just the most amazing thing I ever tasted. And people know I love it. And Booker's goes for about a hundred bucks or more a bottle. But do you know there are small batch bourbons that are even higher proof than Booker's? An even deeper, darker color, an even smoother taste. It, the thing is, the the bottles that uh, that I'm describing to you are rare and expensive, and people have gotten these bottles for me. Now I still love Booker's, and hey, Booker's is the one I'm going to drink. You know why? Because I'm not going to spend two hundred dollars a bottle on bourbon. Right. I'm not. So if somebody chose to get me a much more expensive bottle so I could try it, I wouldn't get upset about it. Okay. Where I'm coming from, and, and we'll make this short so we wrap it up, but I seem to think she did it out of spite because she knows what I like. She knows what I've been drinking, and uh, uh, she has that way about her where I think she did it on purpose. And I thought it might but, be... But you like haven't a- seen what she got you yet. Well... Even if even if it was the best brand of of tequila, it wouldn't be what I like. And I'm not going to look. I am not going to defend your mother in law or anybody's mother in law. I don't think guys should be married. Okay, so don't don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I, I, let yeah, me I use know. a wine analogy. Okay, my favorite red wine in the whole world. Um, well, it's a bottle I rarely buy. It's Chateau Aubryon. It's a uh, Bordeaux. Um, I I love it. I've been to the winery. <laughs> I watched them make barrels at the winery. I mean, I'm a freak for it, but it's expensive. I mean, you're lucky if you can get that for four hundred dollars a bottle. So, do I drink it every day? No. Would I drink it every day if I could? Hell, I wish I could get it out of the fa- faucet of my house. <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> so uh, it isn't the what I drink every day. What I drink every day, I'd be happy if someone gave me another bottle of that. Mm-hmm. But if somebody gave me a bottle of something even better, I'm not going to complain. Right. Which leads me to believe you have some issue with your mother-in-law uh, that goes beyond this, or with no, your no, wife. No, we, we don't. We don't. We don't. Uh, we tolerate each other. We don't like each other. Um, but I, I, I wasn't sure if it was a woman thing where she was trying to change me. For well, what? I don't think we can judge it until we know what she got you. Okay. Well, I'll call. I'll call back. And I'll if let you if know. she got you something equal or less, I'll go with you on that. Okay. If she went out. And rolled out some cashola and got you something really special. She got you a hundred and sixty dollar bottle of top of the line, super premium, um, super añejo tequila. Uh, why in the world would you think that she was? She had it in for you. Ah, it's a tough call. I'd have to. Uh, I'll see. I'll. I'll, uh, I'll give you a follow up on that. It's interesting. Right, hang on, hang on. Let me get Sandy on here now. Sandy, what did you want to say to Carlos? Hey, baby, what's up, Tom? Not um, much. I, I was just trying to tell this guy that um, he just needs to loosen up a little. His mother-in-law is doing something uh, great for him. Maybe he's the one that has issues with her. And um, casadores, that's like buying a six-pack of generic beer. You know, um, there's three four hundred dollar bottles. I have a three hundred dollar bottle of Real sitting um, uh, in my bar, and um, he should just take it. And whether he drinks it or not, that's up to him. But it's not like she's changing his cologne, which he probably doesn't even wear anyway. <laughs> he shouldn't take it personal at all, and he should just welcome it. What, what's he going to give her? Thank you, Sandy. All right, dude, loosen up. I'll take it. Can I give you my address? 
Tom, take me out African style. I love you. Oh, thank you, Sandy. Here you go. Baninge, 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 solo penza. Baninge, 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 solo penza. Five eight hundred town one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I want to let you know I did not believe in the whole Flash Friday. I didn't think that people really did that. I drive a lifted truck with limo tinted windows, so I turned my headlights on, and sure enough, two girls flashed me, <laughs> and I rolled down my windows, and uh, they realized it wasn't a guy, and sped up a little bit. Extremely embarrassed, but I am now a believer of your Flash Friday. <laughs> what do these girls look like? They have nice cans. They were definitely fake, but they were nice. The guy did a good job, or girl, whatever. You know, it's o- it's only chicks who say, oh, they were definitely fake. And no guy cares. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likey Show. Tom, it's our telephone number, Flash Friday. It's the next to last Flash Friday of the season. We'll wrap it up with our Labor Day Friday edition of Flash Friday, one week from today. And uh, we'll complete a summer where I'm here for every single Flash Friday, Friday. There you go. By the way, we have some more uh, very flattering photos of Pierce Brosnan's wife on our webpage. Actually, it's not our webpage, it's on our MySpace. If you go to myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S, this woman's a real looker, and you can get a look at uh, you know Pierce Brosnan, you would imagine, is a really hot wife. Get a look at her in a bikini. We have got bikini shots of Pierce Brosnan's wife at uh, myspace.com slash Tom Likas. Myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. So uh, go to our MySpace and put your comments about these bikini shots. That's a teeny bikini. Take a look. Add your comments. MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Wide open telephones on this Flash Friday. This is Caesar. Hello. Tom, what's up, Tom? This is Caesar from North Hollywood, brother. How you doing? I'm doing okay. I know you are. I know you are. Hey, brother. I just wanted to call you and let you, let everybody know. You know what, Tom? I wish I would have heard your show when I was 20, 21 years old, brother. I messed up. I messed up. Got myself a girlfriend into a relationship. And had a kid, man. Why'd you do that? Because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dummy. I'm a bonehead. I didn't learn. I, I didn't have nobody. T- I didn't have nobody like you telling me. You, you know, know Caesar, you? Caesar. I was here. I've been in L.A. for twenty years. And I didn't know about you back then, brother. Man, I'm, I'm, th- I'm sitting here beating myself up every time I hear these guys calling up, like, oh, my girlfriend this, my girlfriend that, and when, and you tell them. Hey, you don't need a girlfriend. Get out the relationship. Don't call her. And I, man, man, oh man, my life would have been a whole lot different now. No doubt about it. Yeah, man. And you know what? You don't need a girlfriend at twenty-one. What are you doing with the girlfriend? You know? Yeah, you need you need female companionship. That's about it. And we know what we know what that's for, anyway. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying, Cece. Save your money, travel, buy a nice car, get what you want from these females, and bounce. Don't end up stuck, man, like like some of your callers. You know what I'm saying? How old is your kid now? Uh, he's 16 now, man. I'm 37 years old already. Oh, boy. Yeah, man, it's been tough. It's not easy. I'll bet. I wish I would have had your show. I wish I would have been listening to your show back then. You know, but there's even cats almost my age. I own a small little smoke shop over here at the swap meet, right? 
Right. I I see these guys coming out trying to buy, trying to buy pipes and stuff, you know, and it's all good. But here comes their stupid ass girlfriend. Come on, baby, you don't need to be buying that. Come on, let's go look at some socks and t-shirts, and then they follow the girl. Dumbasses. No doubt about it. Dumbasses. That's or or they come over here and they buy something, and I, and I'm like, here, you want a bag for that? No, I have to hide it because my girlfriend might find it. Man, be a man. Be a Step man. Step it up. You know, be, and when they walk away, man, I, I just I just sit here laughing because in a few years they're gonna be stuck with the kid, with a nagging girlfriend or a nagging wife, and, and with the with the a, a BS job. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying, Caesar. Believe me. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Here's Eric on the Tom Likas show on Flash Friday. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Eric. I try and listen to your weekend show about dining and spirits and fine wines and the good life. And I was wondering if you've ever eaten Kobe beef. Many times. Is it that more much more spectacular than standard uh, steak that you'd get at the restaurants? Yes. And what is it? It's like eighty dollars for a tiny little six ounce. Uh, it's more than that. Uh, the last time I had Kobe steak, it was sixteen dollars an ounce. So I had six ounces. It was ninety six dollars. I was wondering if if you can recommend any good restaurants in Southern California that sell Kobe beef. I always wanted to try it. Uh, I recently had a very good Kobe beef experience at the Wolfgang Puck restaurant called Cut. Which is in the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, and uh, I, I'm telling you that you can't imagine how good it is until you've had it. Um, I used to scoff at it myself because I would go to you know Mastro's and get a fantastic steak and say, "What could be better than this?" Well, um, Kobe beef is the most intense beef experience you're ever going to have. And it's the only way I can describe it. It's the most tender beef there is. It has the most intense flavor. If you like the flavor of beef. Right. You know, a lot of meat these days with all the hormones and, and what have you, all the factory farming, a lot of it tastes kind of bland, like, like tomatoes taste bland. Right. This has intense beef flavor. And on top of that, the marbling which is key to any great steak, is the, 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 how the fat is marbled. Um, it, it's about as good as it could possibly be. I mean, Kobe beef almost tastes like a stick of beef butter. That's, that's the best way I could describe it. It melts in your mouth. <laughs> it, it's melting by the, before it gets to your mouth, it's melting. Now, when you go to these restaurants, what do you? What sides do you get? Do they charge you like ten dollars for a baked potato and do everything all the cards? Of course, of course they do. No, no. I mean, this is not like going to the Sizzler, all right? right. Is, Sizzlers is not. I don't like that. No, I'm saying this is a fine dining experience. It's expensive. I mean, if it's ninety six dollars for steak, they're not they're not giving away the baked potato either. No. But if you're looking for that special experience, one that you will remember. You know, I'd give 20 trips to the Sizzler for one trip to have Kobe beef at Cut. Mm -mm -mm. Sounds good. It's spectacular. Do you think you'll ever bring uh, Virtual Tom back? Virtual Tom is always waiting in the wings because, as you know, at any time this whole system could break down, there could be an earthquake, uh, the concrete walls of the room could fall on my head. Uh, we could have a contract dispute here at the company, and the company is always ready because they have to have something. You know, you never hear a fill-in for me. Right. They have to have something ready to go. So, so uh, Virtual Tom is always at the ready. Well, any time you can bring Virtual Tom back, I think he does a great job. Really? <laughs> He's always there. <laughs> yep. Well, it was nice talking to you. You do a great service for all the men out there. And take me out virtual Tom style. All right, here you go. Outrageous. <laughs> Are you a runner or a streamer? <laughs> you.
are a goddamn pussy. <laughs> Pussy. I like that. You are a goddamn pussy. <laughs> he could never master those vowel sounds. Tell me about your wreck. <laughs> your virtual Thomas hosted entire segments of the show. There were callers who were responding to him, too. Unbelievable. I know. Thank you what for tuning into the Tom Lyke show. <laughs> this is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. <laughs> it's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're gonna need it. <laughs> it's 1-805-800-TOM. That's 1-805-800-866. I know Thank when Randy... Ma <laughs> I know when Randy Michaels was in the radio business. I know he wanted to do that. On 1,200 radio stations. <laughs> you don't really care. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Here is Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello there, Rick. Hey, what up, Tom? Yes. Hey, um, my question was, what do you think about that douchebag, uh, Michael Savage? Um... He is a douchebag. Uh, what can I say? I mean, because I've heard his show, man. He In my that, opinion. Uh, yeah, I'm there, sorry. I'm sorry. There should be, he said, like, there should be no um, no porn in America. If it's up to him, he'd have no porn in America. What about um, his own show? I'm sorry? What about his own show? Oh, my God, yeah. There's and porn I, for you. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I just, I don't know, I was just wondering what, you know, what you thought about his radio station, you know, and if he well, did Well, I think it's great that uh, when people are 70 years old that there is radio for them to listen to, and I think it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, if you're in an assisted living facility, that there's a radio show that is specifically targeted to you. And what, a wide, what a big market that must be. I mean, I, yeah, now I can't guarantee all the listeners are awake, but those radios are on at nursing homes from coast to coast. Hmm, that's crazy. Well, hey, anyway, that's all I wanted to know. Hey, what do you expect you from a guy whose real last name is Wiener? Is that really his last name? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's probably why he talks so weird. Hmm. Anyway, yeah. Hey, Tom, will you take me out to uh, Helen Keller style? Helen Keller's now? Of course I can. I'll do this one live. Uh, 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 uh. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Mary on the Tom Likas show. To, uh, tom. Yes. Hi, Tom. I, you just cracked me up. Um, I just, just want to say something out there to the young little women out little thing going on with with their work situation i have fired more women for bringing their personal life into um in into their workplace and it upsets the patients it upsets everything and who cares oh god oh my god i had this all speeched out before you you know you called but i've been on hold for a little while but um I never thought that I would have a, 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 a topic that you would have that I would call in and, and have a passion about. But I've been a boss since I've been 25 years old, and uh, these, these women, these little girls that are coming up in their 20s that called you, the one that compelled me with the one that called you like an hour or so ago, you know, worried about her job because she didn't, you know, go into, you know, her personal life. The worst thing that these girls can do is talk about their personal life in the business. And I have fired more girls doing that than not because 
the patients don't like it, people that work around don't like it, and I just want to tell them, I mean, I've been a boss for a really, really long time, and these girls that come in there and they do their little candlelight, um, uh, uh, you know, you talked about baby showers and everything, but what about the, the, the Tupperware parties and the candlelight parties and all of that? They get fired for that, and I just wanted just to give them a little bit of an insight when they're in their 20s is you have to keep your personal life private, and I totally agree with you on that, that you gave out the right information on that. You have got to keep it personal. You have to keep it private, and you don't involve your, 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 um, your coworkers because the big people that are above you are going to get you, just going to get you fired for it. And hey, and Mary, I'm, let me ask you a question. What about I've been reading this lately? Uh, fascinated with the human resources end of business, by the way, because that's just me. What about um, all the morons who have jobs, who have MySpace pages and Facebook pages, and post pictures of themselves like dressed like, like in a really sexual way, or doing something illegal, or blogging about bad things they do outside of work. Uh, do you guys ever look at people's MySpace pages to get information about them? They know that when they come in, they know that when they come in, they can't, they, they're what, just what you said, Tom, their personal life is their personal life. They, I don't care if there are whatever they do outside their, their, once they walk out our back door and get in their car, is their personal life. You don't involve it with the, the, the rest of it. And, and I have concern about that. And when I see them doing that, I just, you know, I look at it, and it's all clean. The ones that I see is all clean. I don't have the type of uh, employees right now that are doing the dirty stuff. But then I, I, I am concerned with that, that they're doing that. And there's no doubt about it. And if they do, I have to sit there and educate them. And just say this is not how you're going to run your 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 professional life, and and I have to sit there and raise them where their parents failed them to raise them about how you deal with your your business life, and that's what made me compelled to call this show, is because a lot of times the parents are the ones that are at fault with this whole thing, is because they're not um, rearing and gearing their children the right the right way about how you do your business. And you keep your business life separate from your personal life, and you have got to keep it separate, or you're going to lose your job. I have um, taken a lot of people out of my, my, my business because of that, and it's because they have no direct, direct, um, uh, 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 direct um, uh, shoot, um, they, have, they have no guidance, that's it, they have no guidance of what is right and wrong, and they think they, they, they can go ahead and do that in their personal life as well as in their business life, and they can't do it. It doesn't mix. Yeah, I think a lot of people just don't know the reality of it. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-866. I don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't die. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. Calling from, well, State College Boulevard. Are you in Anaheim or Orange? Where are you, State? Hey, Tom, right now I just got on the 57 freeway. You're not going to believe it. I got flashed again while waiting, man. Really? I cannot believe this today, Tom. This has just been the best Flash Friday ever. How great is that? Yeah, man, it's amazing. I got flashed on State College Boulevard right at uh, the Brea Mall. The first mm -hmm. time by a chick in a, a gray SUV, I think with a Honda Passport or something. Uh -huh. And then when I got on the freeway just now, I started flashing my lights again, and I got flashed again by another chick in a in a green Civic. Wow! Yes. Look Great at day, you, Tom. Thank you. 
Now, were these were great, uh, great knockers. What's the oh, deal? Oh man, great knockers! I don't know much about the faces because I wasn't looking up, but the knockers were great. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, Tom, can you uh, take me out uh, ghetto style and blow me up? What, ghetto style? Uh, Snoop Dogg style and blow oh, me up. Oh, okay. Here you go. Bitch. It's 1 800 5 Whoa! 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Ben on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. This is Ben. I know, I just said that. Uh, I knew I was going to get that. Uh, I've been listening to you uh, really a lot uh, in the past year. I unfortunately had a motorcycle accident, went down on my uh, Harley about 70, and it's taken a year to get better, so I get to listen to you every day, which gets me to my point. I've heard you reference a quote uh, frequently this week, which is, don't lick a gift horse in the mouth is what I think I hear you saying. And I understand it to be, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Can you explain that? Well, I mean, you wouldn't want to lick a gift horse in the mouth, would you? No, I never would. Sounds like you're saying so, lick. So don't be doing that. Exactly. So are don't you be saying licking, lick Don't be a licking horse? a gift horse in the mouth. It would be wrong. <laughs> Not recommended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think it tastes very well, and he might bite. <laughs> That's exactly right. So did I catch you? You catch me what? Making a mistake and saying lick instead of look. Why? Why? I don't see why anyone is more right than the other. Because <laughs> you want to make sure they're a healthy horse by uh, looking at their gums rather than licking. That's their... right. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Serious. But I haven't. I haven't been flashed yet. I've been trying, but uh, they don't seem to flash. But I have my uh, my nineteen year old son. I tell him to turn his lights on down in Orange County, and so hopefully he'll get a good look. Well, good luck on that. All right. Well, thanks, Tom. You take care. Take me out with, uh, if you will, uh, the African uh, kids and then a drive-by shooting with the Snoop Dogg uh, biatch. Okay. Here you go. Baninge, 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 so finza. Baninge, 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 so finza. They get so complicated sometimes. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Beatrice on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Love your show. Thank you. Um, I just want to comment about your talk yesterday regarding the uh, the girls socializing at work. Yes. Uh, well, I'm an HR manager, and that's probably got to be my biggest problem. Just girls, just baby showers and wedding showers and what are you doing this weekend and, um, you know, babies and I'm getting married and I'm having problems with my husband and just socializing, gossiping. I mean, there's just no end to it. And I think that's one of the primary reasons some women come to work. Well, you know, they need to leave it at home. Um, you know, we need productive people. Um, you know, all I'm concerned is their performance, that they come to work and, and do what they are paid for. We don't pay them to to come to work and plan parties. Um, you know, they can go be a party event planner if that's what they want to do. Well, they, they, what it is is I think a lot of women come to the office and don't want to do any work. That's that's true as well. You know, I but, really believe a lot of women come to work just hoping to meet a guy they can marry, who will then do all the work and pay all the bills. Well, that's probably not too far from the truth. That is true. Uh, you know, actually, that's been a big trend in the workplace as well. Is you know, office romances, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's a whole other issue um, because that just holds different set of problems, uh, you know, for the company, for myself, who, you know, have to deal with investigations and sexual harassment complaints and mm -hmm. so forth. So it's just, you know, that's just a whole, you know, other drama. But um, definitely, you know, women in the workplace, I mean, I just wish they would just come to work, do what it is that, you know, they're required to do and go home. Yeah. You know, and the problem is that, you know, it's not only the young girls that are doing this, it's it's the 50-year-olds as well, you know. So the ones that come and, and, you know, take, 
instead of, you know, having their 10-minute break, they take 30-minute breaks and talking about their grandkids and what they're doing this weekend. And they're taking a family vacation and just, you know, getting the whole entire office, you know, involved. And, you know, people don't care. People have to work. People have things to do. And, you know, and the more you get personal, the more people also feel the right to get involved in your life as well. And then that just, you know, brings up a whole sort of other problems with people and conflicts. Um, so it's just a mess. No, I don't disagree with you, darling. You know, and it just makes my job a lot a lot harder as well, you know, and, and definitely, um, you know, you have to put a stop to it. I think you're absolutely right, dear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Daniel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? I'm going to call you Uncle Tom because I already got a daddy, but you've been like a daddy to me. Why, thank you. All right. I just I just wanted to get your opinion uh, actually on marijuana use. I know you, you put down alcoholism and, and basically any other type of drug use, but what are you, your views on marijuana? I think marijuana should be legal. I've smoked it myself. Well, that's, that's great to hear, man. I mean, I, I thought you would be all against it, you know, considering the stereotypical uh, personas we'll put out there. So, No, uh, why would you think that? Well, I mean, because whenever... Up to, up... Zero tolerance policy. Oh, man. You're out! Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. You got that? Tom at... BlowMeUpTom.com Our show streams live at BlowMeUpTom.com The Tom Likas Show.